tingling, isn't it? And in all likelihood, it will be the last, the last great analogue supercar we will ever see. And if it is, we can at least say we went out on a high. Because, oh my God, the gear change, the noise, the engine, the steering wheel, the pedals, the driving position, the view out, the noise again, the everything about this car. It is sublime. So just sit back and listen to it. <laughs> oh, that noise! Oh, it is divine. We're up in the Pyrenees, slaloming between cowpats currently. The weather's great and the roads are spectacular. But we didn't start here. This is the actual start of our journey, the Gordon Murray Service Centre in Barcelona. And very soon I get to drive T50 for the first time. I am so excited. But first, I need to know what I'm doing. And for that, I have Nick Hoyle, the chief engineer. Hello, Nick. Hello, how are you doing? Nice very to see good you. indeed. Thank you very much. Very right. What do I need to know about your very precious and valuable but our car? Our fantastic PS4. Yes. Our pretty, yes. So, first of all, you need the key. There you go. Thank you very much indeed. That's quite light, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> everything about the car is super light. Right. One of our USB Nick then proceeds to tell me everything I need to know about actually operating the T50 from how to open the doors and get in. So I tend to put it exactly, a feet in first, feet sit on the passenger seat, yep. and then uh, and shift yourself the into the driver's seat, just like you would if in an F1. To how to use the aircon, charge my phone, where to store stuff, and what the controls do, such as the... Yeah, the 13,000 RPM <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, rev I'm counter. That makes you laugh it, as well. Uh, every time, it doesn't ever get old, <laughs> thankfully. It's flanked by two screens, the right running the infotainment and rear camera, the left used for car information such as tyre pressure, fan speed and wing angle. As Nick puts it... Yeah. All, the, all the cool geeky stuff. We also talk about the astonishing 4-litre naturally aspirated Cosworth V12. So GT right. mode is standard, um, uh, sport mode gives you much more linear throttle map and the right. car follows the pedal much more. So you get put a bit of gas on, you get a response, a yeah. little bit off, you get a, um, a similar response. And does That's it do anything else? Because it, doesn't, make, it doesn't adjust the suspension, no. does it? No, 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 no. it's just, just the throttle. throttle pedal map. Right. So you get 12,000 RPM in, every, uh, in yeah. both modes, you get the full crazy responsiveness of the engine, the 52,000 yeah. RPM a second. <laughs> get a good <laughs> air. Um, 50, get 52,000 RPM a second? We've measured 52,000 RPM a second. Oh my God. So other, other car manufacturers have suggested their engines react more quickly than any other in the world. Yeah. They don't. Ours does. <laughs> 52,000 RPM a second. It's, it's bonkers wow. numbers, right? In essence, to get going, to drive away right now, that's all you that's need it. to know. I mean, it looks so, so straightforward because you just get in, you understand all the controls really quickly. Yes. Because it's simple and it's yeah. all understandable. And then you've just got a six-speed H-pattern yes. gearbox and a, and a fly-off handbrake. A fly-off handbrake. Should have mentioned the fly-off handbrake. Yeah. Because it's really important that yeah. for us that this is a car that you get out what you put in. So the more mm. time you spend with it, the more effort you put into it, the yeah. more reward you're going to get from driving it. Yeah. This isn't a car where you get in and in, within a mile of driving down the road you think you know it. Mm. We, we don't want that. Yeah. We want you to learn. The message is clear. The T50 is going to take some learning. So I don't mind admitting I was feeling a bit daunted the next morning when I turned out onto the streets of Barcelona. So here we go then, equal parts trepidation and elation. I'm trying to keep the silly smile off my face. First gear change in a T50. Oh my God, that's easy. The view out is just amazing. I mean, you feel like you're, the, the bonnet seems to be right on top of your toes. Your down angle is so good on it. And the sense of space, because it already feels narrow, it's just a bit of a sensory bombardment. So PS4 is not a PlayStation code, it is the final pre-series prototype before the T50 goes into production. One and two are currently doing testing, 
three was shunted into a crash structure and four, four is what I'm driving. The last one before they start building the customer cars. I can't believe how light and tractable it feels. Oh, the engine sounds quite sort of plain and airy low down and then you suddenly get a little bark of it starting to come in. Oh, massive speed bump. This is going to be interesting. I mean, genuinely massive. Let's try it. No issues whatsoever. Straight up and over. This is one of the things they really worked on was not having nose lift because it adds extra weight so you can cope with the speed bumps without any problem. That was remarkable. That was a huge speed bump. No issues at all. In traffic, this is the least intimidating hypercar supercar I've ever driven because the visibility is so good and because it feels small. It's just easy to manage, easy to place and position. It's just so easy to get moving in. I think of all the things, I don't know what to second guess what I'm going to think when we get up to the mountains, but that is remarkable. You know, just how easy it is to manage at low speeds. It was the thing I was most concerned about, what the compromises they would have had to make to keep a manual gear lever in this car, how stiff the clutch was going to be, how tractable the engine would be at low revs. And the suspension feels firm as it's going over there, but I mean, already just that sense of steering connection in it. Ah, ho, 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 ho. makes me excited for what's coming later. OK, so it is goodbye Barcelona and hello motorways for the next stage of our journey, which means I can go for a top gear. There we go. Sixth gear. Look how the revs die away. Oh, my God, they dropped from 4,000 to under two and a half. That's amazing. It just feels like the engine's died completely. This one is fitted with that longer sixth gear. And I, I can't see a reason why you wouldn't want it. Ooh, first tunnel time. Oh, there's another one just ahead as well. Right, windows down this time. What gear should we go for? That's fifth at the moment, which is at 5,000 revs. Fourth, still only at 6,000. Third, that puts it up to 7,000. Right, ready, and... <laughs> A quick flare up to 10. Oh, yeah. Right, got to get through a toll booth. This is the thing everyone talks to you about, isn't it? Is can you get through a toll booth with it? So, righty ho, let's give it a go. Okay. So it only just struck me as I was coming up to that toll booth that I was in a central driving position and would need to potentially reach my arm out the window or something if I needed to. Until now, it has not crossed my mind once that I'm in a central driving position car. That's how natural it feels immediately. So driving around town and everything never even struck me that I was in a central driving position. There's general road noise, which is the driver comes at you from all sides because you haven't got a bulkhead right behind you. And there's ever present engine noise as well. And when you're just cruising along like we are now, that noise is quite plain. But it's just encouragement that what the car really wants to be doing is playing around in fifth. Or fourth. Or third. Or second. <laughs> wow. That's uh, something for the senses. <laughs> but it's a reminder that this is a sports car. It's not a GT. It's not a GT. Just that sense of weight as you push a bit of steering lock in. Ah, it's really good. Really good. You just want to find yourself, want to carve some shapes with the steering for a minute. Ah, oh, the scenery is getting good now. Happy days.
the T50 makes light, easy progress and does so at 25 to the gallon. I'd have no issue seeing off a 600 mile cross continent cruise, but right now I don't have that far to go, just a hop up into the mountains and a stop in a lay-by. Because I figured out that if Gordon had gone to that much effort with the pedals, I ought to at least try and get the most out of them. Now we're getting to the good roads and I did consider making this the ultimate lightweight road trip and weighing everything I was wearing. But I thought, well, if that was the case, Gordon Murray wouldn't have supplied this car with fitted luggage. He'd have supplied it with a couple of black bin liners. So clearly weight isn't absolutely everything. It's just nearly everything. For a while, I was worried that the steering, I thought, oh, is that consistent? Well, no, what's different is that so many other steering systems filter everything out to give you this very smooth, progressive feel. The Murray doesn't. Here, you've got real steering feel. I mean, where have you been all my life? You're back, it's wonderful. But the sensation of being in this car, the sensation of the view out from it, of this super clean dashboard is unlike anything else, anything else. So the ride is so good. It's short travel, but it's so composed. It recovers its composure so quickly when it hits anything. So there's no delay and it's not stiffly sprung. You're aware. I mean, there's very little travel in those springs, but what travel there is, isn't stiff. This is not a lightweight car to operate. It's a lightweight car to drive, but the operation of it, the steering has real weight because it's unassisted. The clutch is heavy because it's managing a lot of power. The gear change takes a deliberate hand. This is not a lever that you're gonna flick back and forth like you're in a Civic Type R. But the reward, the satisfaction of it, comes from getting all of those things right. Because when you do, when you get it bob on, oh my God, do you know about it? Everything is fabulous. The engine loses revs so fast that keeping it on the boil between gear changes so it doesn't lose it is difficult. You have to concentrate. You have to pay attention. And the steering around hairpins, it really weights up. You're aware of the masses. There's quite a lot of heft. Earlier, my shoulders started aching a bit. But here, once you get up into third and fourth gear sweepers, it's just divine. You have such an instinct for exactly where the car is. And even when the road is rough, you feel how it just flatters you, how it just skips and smooths along is amazing. It's just beautifully damped. And don't forget, entirely passive suspension. There is no adaptive damper within sight of this car. And the symmetry of this central seat just soothes my brain. It feels immediately wonderful to drive. It's just so biddable. There are elements of it that are like an Alpine A110R in that when you brake and turn, you're not really aware of it having to deal with any mass at all. It just seems to break and turn in one effort. And then you just... Oh my God, it's just, it is dazzling. Absolutely dazzling. And the narrowness of it, the fact that you always have more room across the road because it's 150 millimeters narrower than most sports cars. It just makes it feel so playful and you've got room to move and not only have we got passive suspension and unassisted steering there's only one choice for driver mode you either have gt or sport my god they've hit a sweet spot with it you have to be a bit in control of yourself driving this
The T50 isn't like other hypercars. It feels and behaves more like a Lotus than a Bugatti or Pagani. It has this in common with its predecessor. Gordon Murray has made no secret of the fact that T50 copies the template of the legendary McLaren F1. It's a driver's car. It doesn't have the artistry, glamour or impact we associate with other multi-million pound cars. Both then and now, Gordon wanted a car that broke with supercar tradition. So think of this as both tribute and replacement. Now, I don't think the T50 has quite such a strong visual identity and graphic signature as the F1, but I do like the under the radar subtlety of it, the fact it's not too ostentatious. Anything else I'm not too sure of? Well, I've spoken about the seat and one or two other things already. So how about the key? Yes, it's very light and it's got a little built-in Allen key here that allows you to take it apart and discover there's nothing more than a circuit board inside. But it's a bit big and chunky for a small, dainty car. However, it does allow you to do this. No other car is packaged like this. No other hypercar is as light or as usable as this. It bucks the trend. It breaks from that more ornate, overtly luxurious template laid down by cars like the Pagani Huayra and Bugatti Chiron. Look how open it is inside, how much room there is for kit in the flanks. Now we have done lots on the T50 already. We've done walk around films. We've had Gordon himself show us around the car. And I don't want to cover too much old ground. I want to show you things you haven't seen before, starting with the toolkit. Here we are then, have a look at this. We've got the brake fluid reservoir, the screen wash filler here, your tire inflation kits, titanium towing eye, which shows some signs of use and the star of the show, the pièce de résistance, the titanium nitride coated gold toolkit. Let's hope we don't need it today. The T50 gains 28,400 revs per second, only it doesn't. That was Cosworth's initial figure. Their latest calculation is 52,000 revs per second. Idle to the red line in 0.2 seconds. Here's what that sounds like. Right, aero. Let's close these down gently. Now, no big wings, obviously, instead the funky fan with its various modes. Now, as you well know, it's more about stability than downforce, but still 460 kilos at the 226 mile an hour VMAX is not to be sniffed at. Much more importantly though, it's got a demo mode. Hope you enjoyed our impromptu shampoo advert there, but I'm now going to show you the cabin because I've spent a couple of days with the car and I think I've nailed the technique for getting in and out. Basically one leg in, crouch down. There is a handle here to help you, but I find it easier to put my hand across, hand there, and just sort of shuffle my bum in. Now, once you're in, I had to go to Gordon Murray and do a full seat fitting because the steering wheel and the pedals, it's a little bit of a hassle to move them around. But for me, this driving position is now perfection. There is no better driving position in the world. Just this clear view ahead and these such well-organized instruments. One thing I was worried about though, is the little compartments here, because the magnets aren't very strong and I worried they would pop open, but no issues, nothing has come flying out yet. Down here, there's more storage and the little fly-off handbrake with its sort of open, drilled out finish. It's just beautiful. Right, over this side, the other side of the seat, we've got 
the gear lever. Listen, this is all ASMR in here. The click of these dials and the action, this is my favourite, the action of the reverse cutout switch is just gorgeous. I just love having to get into reverse because I get to operate that switch. And behind it, even more important, the starter button under its cover. Now it will stay up, but it's designed for you to just slide your finger in and press it, which is what I'm gonna do now. Engineering art. That's how Gordon Murray describes it. And after all, he is the Picasso of light waiting, the Van Gogh of driver involvement, the Michelangelo of detail. But forget the daft analogies because for me, this car is the pinnacle. Not just because it is everything I could ever want from a driver's car, but because of what it means to me personally. The F1 was the car that inspired me above all others to want to be a motoring journalist. And even now I can feel the hairs on my neck standing up because it's to be the person charged with the responsibility of coming out and driving the T50, to be able to do it, to be able to confront it and just enjoy and relish the experience and to discover that a generation on, Gordon Murray still knows what he's doing and what he's created is possibly the finest sports car ever to turn a wheel. Now I could waffle on, but you don't want to hear any more from me. Shall we let the car have the final say?